This is the assembly of the gliding parachute system from Apogee Components. My name is Tim Van Milligan. In this first episode, we're going to start assembling the controller. So our first step is to test the electronics because we want to make sure that everything works before we start putting things together. The kit does come with the servo, but you have to provide your own receiver and transmitter. Um, and it doesn't matter which brand you use, um, every one of them has to be bound. So you have to bind your receiver to the transmitter. Now this is something out of the scope of what we can handle here at Apogee Components. So if you're in doubt on how to do that, check with the user's manual of your transmitter. Um, so what I want to get out is the servo, the switch, and the little battery. Now the battery should be charged before you receive it, but there is a charger um, that you might want to charge it up just to top it off before. Um, it's a USB charger, so you just plug it in, and then you plug it into your USB outlet, and then when the light goes off, then it's charged. Um, so first we want to hook everything up. Um, and when you look at your receiver, um, it's going to have a number of pins right here. Uh, one of them is going to be labeled battery, another one's going to be labeled aileron, an elevator, and rudder. You have to decide which of these sticks that you want to move when um, you control your servo. So I'm going to use this stick right here on my transmitter so that when I'm flying the glider, all I have to do is move my thumb left or right. That's all the control that we'll have is just left or right. So um, first we're going to take the switch and we're going to connect that to the battery. And it only goes in one way. Um, then we're going to take the other end of the switch and we're going to connect it to the battery terminal, the pins here on the receiver, like that. Um, and then we're going to take the servo and I'm going to put a servo arm on here. So in the box with the servo is all this little hardware. Um, these are called control arms. And I'm going to take the biggest one right here. And I'm just going to press it onto the, the, little, the little spines right there. So that when I move it, you'll see it move back and forth. Um, in fact, this is the one that we're going to use when we assemble it because we want the widest one um, that will still fit within the clear payload tube. Okay, so then we're going to take this and we're going to plug it into the appropriate channel on your receiver. Like that. And you have to decide which one that you're going to use depending on which of these controls over here. Um, and then we're going to turn on the switch and I should see a light come on and I did it flickered really quick um, and then I'm going to turn on my transmitter and if it's bound this will light up and now it's a matter of um, taking the control and testing it to make sure that it works and this is the right channel because when I go left and right you can see it move okay so now I know my servo is working because that's the only electronic component that Apogee provides and we want to test this because once we assemble the eBay this servo is really hard to get in and out so we want to make sure that it's working before we do anything else so I'm going to turn this off and just unplug everything and now we can go ahead and start the assembly so I'm going to turn this off and get it out of the way don't need that Okay, so I'm going to follow along with my instructions. All right, so the first step is to take that clear tube and the two 
uh, red rings and we're just going to pop them apart really quick uh, and then I want to get my bulkheads right here I'm going to pop these out of the plywood and these are going to fit right inside of here and you just test fit them and they, they fit just fine. Now you can see that this has um, it has a clear wrap on the outside and that's just to protect it from getting scratched up. Um, you can leave it on or pull it off. I'm going to pull mine off so if I can find an edge. There we go. And so this is just, again, this is just for protection to keep it from getting scratched. Over time, it's going to get scratched up, but it's not going to be too bad. You're still going to be able to see through it. Um, then we want to take these red rings and we want to put one on each side. And they're a nice snug fit. And then we want to take these bulkheads and we want to push them in. And we're, we're just using them as spacers at this point um, to get the right depth. And so once you get it to the right depth and just pop that out. And I'm going to take some thin super glue and I'm just going to go around the perimeter with the super glue and glue it into place. And you can see that you know it turns nice and um, you know red. Let me get a paper towel here and just wipe off the excess. I want to do the same thing on this side. I noticed they got a little bit of a nub on them um, where they were they were hooked together. And you can either take some sandpaper or a knife and just sand them off. At least on the edge that's going to be against the bulkhead. I should have done that to the first one. Just so that it fits in a little nicer. Okay, so again, I just want to push it in to where it's all the way at the edge. And then if, you, uh, if it moves too far, just take something and press it down. Okay, and again, just going to wick thin CA into that. Now, I'm just going to set this aside to dry. I don't want to put these bulkheads back in because that's still wet. Okay, so I'm just going to set that aside. So while that's drying, I next want to find that little plastic grommet. And my eBay board right here. And this grommet, we first need to cut it in half. Just like that. And we're going to stick it into the holes and you want to press it in until um, it's just starting to come out the one end. Now the purpose of this is we're going to tie um, a Kevlar line to this and we don't want it to rub on the fiberglass because um, the fiberglass is abrasive and we don't want to fray the, the Kevlar so that over time it might break. Okay, so I got it in there. Uh, and now I can just take a drop of super glue, go around the outside with it. And I'm going to let that wick in. And now we're going to take our knife and we're going to cut, trim off the excess on both sides. Just like that. Okay. Now this bulkhead right here 
we'll pop out these little um, excess pieces. And we'll also pop out those holes. Okay, so this, when you trim these off, we have to slide through those holes. And the first time you do it, it's not going to fit. Um, so it's just telling me that I need to trim a little bit more. Now, if you were smart, <laughs> you would have put this on first and then put in the little plastic grommets. All it needs to do is to go over it. Okay, so now that's on there. You just want to make sure that it's nice and vertical. And then we're going to glue that into place. I'm going to do both sides. And I'm going to take some accelerator and just kick that off. Okay, so that's nice and tight. That's good. That's just how we want it. All right, so now we're going to go to this servo arm right here. This is our next step. Um, we've got this Kevlar cord right here, and it's got to pass through that the outermost hole of the servo arm. Um, so um, see how afraid it is right there? So to and we're going to cut that off. Let's just put a drop of thin CA glue on it. Um, and that's going to harden that up. And then we'll cut off that frayed area right there. Okay, so like just like that. Um, All we need to do is to make sure that it goes through the hole. And this one goes through the hole just fine. If it doesn't go through the hole, um, take a small drill um, like a 16th inch or smaller drill bit and you can just drill out that hole and you want to do both on the outermost um, arms of, of the control arm right here. Now if you have a really long one you may have to trim it off so that it fits inside your tube. So as long as it, it, it fit in the tube use the outermost hole like that. So this one, um, the instructions say to drill it. Mine does fit, so I'm just going to leave it and not drill it. But you understand what to do. All right, so we're going to pause here, and then in the next video, we'll continue with the construction of the eBay system for the gliding parachute. <laughs>